This conference will now be recorded. Okay, if I can get a mover and a seconder to open our meeting of council, please. Peter, John. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor John Peroff. Be it resolved that we do call this special regular, or sorry, this regular meeting of council to order on Wednesday, June 17th, 2020 at 6.01 p.m. All in favor? Aye. Okay, right on. Thank you, Belinda. And that's carried. Okay, number two is review and note of any changes to the agenda. And I need a mover and a seconder to approve the agenda as presented. I move it. Thank you, Drake. Thank you, Belinda. That's moved by Councillor Drago Stefanik and seconded by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that Council does hereby approve the agenda as presented. All in favor? Aye. And that's carried. Okay, item number four, disclosure of pecuniary interest and in, in, sorry, pre, disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof and declaration of conflicts of interest. As council, you know that you can declare that now or anytime throughout the meeting. There being none, we'll move on. Five adoption of minutes, there are none. Six, seven, eight, nine, all uh, no items. So we'll move on to Manager's reports. If I can get a mover and a seconder to uh, move the reports and we can start discussing them. Peter and John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that council be it resolved that the council, the corporation, the township of Horn Payne does hereby acknowledge receipt of the manager's reports provided at the regular meeting of council held on Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. And I open the floor for Gail's report. Gail, did you I want to speak to anything on your report before I open it for questions? I don't think so. Okay. Okay, Gail's reports in your council package. Do you have any questions, council, for Gail? I do it through you, Mayor. Yes, go ahead, uh, Councillor Stefan. Number one, I agree, concur with the CAO to set the budget meeting for uh, June 24th. Number two, I'm glad that the SPARK program is going to be happening in Horn Bain. Number three, the three grants that were denied, I'm not sure if our members read, so, so Celebrate Ontario grant, OTF grant denied, and Canada Green uh, Stream denied. That's a major grant that we could have used for declaration system. That's about a million dollars, which we will have to find in our own budget. So I'm not sure everybody read it, but that's serious stuff. Furthermore, I think what the mayor does her um, expose, I think she should mention that the staff worked very hard to try to obtain these grants and these grants were denied. I think the public should know that and not just sweep it under the rug. And the fact the staff did go forth, full investigation, background and we were denied. I think that's crucial that the taxpayers know this community know that. Thank you. So just a comment to uh, your, uh, just one second there, Gail, just a comment to Councillor Stefanik. When you say mayor's expose, are you talking about a mayoral update? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking yeah. about there, Drago. You're, you're muted. Council. I'm on. You're on now, yep. <laughs> no, when the council, when you talk about council with the things that have been accomplished, I think that's very crucial to be part of it. Okay, sounds good. Gail, go ahead. We haven't heard back yet from the Trillium grant. It's just that we applied for both programs at the same time to do the community uh, arts project. So we haven't heard back from that one yet. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay, is there any other questions for Gail from Council? Uh, yes, go ahead, Councillor Peroff. 
Yeah, through you, uh, Mayor. Uh, I'm just curious, your economic development intern, where uh, you had a number of uh, uh, number of people there. Were any of them from town or all of them? Or? No, nobody from town. Thank you. Okay, I have a question on a uh, follow-up question to John's about that. Have we been able to secure them yet? Because uh, this was written a bit late, or sorry, not it. There's lag in our council. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. um, we have interviews set up for Friday, and only two of the five possibilities responded that they were interested in having an interview. So, okay, okay, it's Friday. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Okay, any other further discussion on the CAO's report? I don't see any from Council. Belinda, your mic's on. Do you have any questions? No, I have no questions. Okay. Pretty um, straightforward. I, okay, thank you, Belinda. Um, I just have one, uh, for the $1 million to complete the project that we were denied through the Canada Green Stream funding, have you have any ideas on um, any other communities, what they've done or how we're going to approach this, just so council starts thinking their wheels turning on where we want to go? I'm having a meeting um, next mm -hmm. week with Pat Albert and Joanna Kirkbride from Aqua. Awesome. to discuss some options and then also uh, with the treasurer we'll have discussions when she's back okay great okay if there's no further questions thank you gail for your report and um we'll move on to the public works manager's report Dwayne's not uh, here today so i guess gail you'll take any questions back to him okay so I open the floor if you have any questions for the Public Works Manager. I do. Okay, <clears throat> go ahead, Councillor Stefanik, and then Councillor Peroff. Here you, Mayor, to uh, CEO. The last item on um, Dwayne's report, good report, by the way, for Dwayne, thank you, uh, has a, a ship and a ride of the liquid calcium. No, it hasn't arrived yet. Thank you. Thank I you, have a question. Know. Uh, thank you, Councillor Stefanik. Uh, Councillor Belinda Kistmaker, just hold on. I have Councillor Peroff next. Go ahead, John. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, <clears throat> a wireless doorbell system for the uh, building, what was the purpose of it again? Just so the doors could remain locked when the building is not open for business and people, um, if, if somebody comes and wants in for something, the staff can hear them. All right. And, and also Thanks. for accessibility if they need help getting in. Okay, thank you. Councillor uh, Belinda Kistemaker, go ahead. I had questions on more explanation about uh, maintaining the aggregate. How's that been working out? I wasn't too sure what he was trying to get across there. I, I don't have the report in front of me because I've lent my iPad, <laughs> but... Um, um just a second there do i have it here what i'm thinking he's talking about is um we've been selling some aggregate and then just maintaining enough for our own use is that what you mean belinda i guess when he was talking about selling it i was kind of interested on in what you were doing there i hadn't heard about it yeah well it's something new people have been asking and uh, we always refer them to um, contractors and have them sign off on a form saying that they have checked with contractors and they're not interested in waiting for out-of-town people to bring the, the product so um, if, if we can make some revenue on it and it's above board then why wouldn't we do it right yeah I thought so too and uh, I was just wondering like yeah. how much is this being used like uh, great quite, sum, a bit, yeah. quite a bit Right on. Yep. Is that everything, Councillor Kissmaker? <clears throat> yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, right on. Okay, um, I just want to uh, comment. Really good report in the sense that uh, I like that it's all linked to all our action items. And uh, the street survey inspections, sorry, that's not the one I, the sign inspections, 
So is that going to go right into our asset management planning now? It will eventually, yes. Yeah, okay, right on. So any further questions for the public works uh, manager? There being none, we'll move on to the economic development officer's report. And I open, or I'll give uh, Stacy the opportunity if you'd like to speak to your report first, Stacy, or would you like to open the floor for questions? Uh, the only thing I'd like to say is we had the first OP um, community session on last Saturday, and uh, there was lower than we were hoping, but the discussion was great. So uh, they brought out a lot of really good points, and the consultant is happy with the feedback. And then we also put out a mail out on Monday, just because we didn't get the, the involvement that we wanted. So we put a mail out now. We'll do one again before the next. But it was it was really good. So I'll answer any other questions you have. Okay, just a question on that, Stacy. Would you like me to promote that in a Facebook live, uh, an update? And with the, I can show the one that I got in the mail if you like. You can, and they can do it on our township website. It's been on there for a few weeks, so uh, okay. if they wrap it with electronic, they can. Okay. Okay, I'll open the floor up for our economic development officer from council. If you have any questions for Stacy for her report, Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Thank you, Mary. Through you, uh, Stacy. I'm not sure if you're aware, but I see the. Um, announcement by provincial government yesterday, Northern Ontario received $2.3 million for broadband broadband projects. Uh, Duberville received $1.36 million uh, fiber optic infrastructure from Wawa to Duberville and Neo Eastern Net received $332,000. The group you're part of, did we receive anything even remotely close for our area to improve our, improve our broadband, uh, Stacey? So the Duperville application um, went in as part uh, just before our group, while our group was forming. So they had the biggest gap because they're still on um, dial-up. Uh, so they had a, a separate application plus they're in our application, in our group application. So that money was, separate, but uh, we've known about it all, all the way along and we're still, we haven't got, uh, besides our, our study monies, we haven't got any infrastructure money yet, but that grant's worked on right now by a working group so our fault our meeting is tomorrow so you re, as a just repeat you received no money at all as, as a group just for the studies yeah we have for for the studies thank you okay any other questions for the economic development officer go ahead councillor paroff yes through you mayor uh stacy can you provide a bit more uh uh, of uh, a update on the LCBO and the uh, 180 Front Street, as opposed to last meeting. Um, so I'm working on the, the Northern Star. The next steps for that is the spec sheet, but the LCBO, I'm not working currently on that right now. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, one question I had. Oh, go ahead, Gail. Go ahead. I just wanted to say that uh, the LCBO will be up for discussion on the July 15th meeting. Okay, there we go. Thank you for that, Gail. So um, I just have one question for you, Stacy. I actually had a business owner approach me today um, about having. Um, buy local policies put in place at the municipality which i know we've had discussion on it but i was wondering where that would fit in is it um right in our uh business planning are you talking about for the municipality itself yeah for the municipality itself to to support buy local initiatives i think it would be um part of the administration just the the uh purchasing policies Purchasing policies, okay. So then I'm going to move that just because it's economic development. Uh, Gil, do we have any, uh, what are our current purchasing policies? Are they, have we ever looked at a strategy that way? You know what, I'm, I'm not sure I'd have to look back on it. I don't think it's outlined 
Oh, it could be. I, I'd have to look. I don't know it that well off, off the top of my head. Okay. Okay. We can look it, into it. And, yeah. It's, it it um, likely needs to be updated anyways, because um, we're looking at updating lots of our policies and they all, after the SDR, they're all supposed to tie in together. So it likely has to be updated anyways. Okay. I'll jot that down. Okay. Any other questions for the economic development officer? Okay, well, thank you for your report, Stacy and Gail and uh, Dwayne, who's not here. So I need a, uh, if there's any further questions from council at all, or I'll uh, read the motion for vote. Okay. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the manager's reports provided at the regular meeting of Council, held on Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. And it's up for vote. Those in favour? Aye. Okay, that's all in favour. Carried. Okay, so moving on, we have correspondent action items. So the 11.1 .1 was the new Ontario Provincial Police Detachment Boards. We were going to revisit this and come back to it. Uh, Cheryl, there's a resolution yes. under um, CAO's report. Oh, is there? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, I see it. Okay, there's. Uh, this is for the... Um, Budget meetings, if I can get a mover and a seconder, and I'll read out the motion, please. Peter and Drago. Thank you for alerting me that to that, Shannon. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Drago Stefanik. Be it resolved that the council of the corp... Sorry. Be it resolved that council does hereby change the purpose of the special meeting of council scheduled for Wednesday, June 24th, 2020, from intend to adopt the 2020 bu municipal budget to initial presentation of 2020 municipal budget. Be it further resolved that resolution number 2020-181 is hereby rescinded. Taking the vote, those in favour? Aye. And that's all in favour, so carried. Okay, so now moving on to correspondent action items. So the document is in your agenda packages. And we were talking about, uh, this is putting in, sorry, I got to get to it. We did have an initial discussion on certain topics that we wanted uh, for consideration and we were asking if there was anything further that we wanted to discuss. Yes, go ahead, Gail. So I did get an email back from uh, Councillor Stefanik with some input and I just had um, summarized kind of what they're looking for or what I would be looking for to put together a, a submission. So it would be what you would like to see for board boundaries, the size and composition of boards. Um, and there's a, a suggestion that DSABs might be a good uh, thing to head the boards in the north. But then since then, uh, in, um, a release came out from Phnom sort of against that. And I, I've attached uh, that release and also a resolution from another township uh, expressing their support for Phnom's uh, opinion that it would not be a good thing, so something to consider. Um, and actually, if if you want to discuss that issue as well, we could have a resolution ready for the next meeting if you wish to support Phnom. Uh, also, how to handle the costs of the boards and the level of input uh, are topics that boards should have uh, input on what the level of, uh, how much power I guess they should have.
And this needed to be in by what day, Gail? It's right now it's on hold. We would just oh, we're wanting to okay. be prepared so that when it opens up that we could submit. Thank you for that. Okay. And we don't have anything formally written tonight, so you're looking for ideas so that we can put it on the next, the resolution on the next one? Uh, yeah, it could be a resolution or just a, a, or a letter, whatever you the letter, prefer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just, for myself, I'll, or unless council, anyone on council, would they like to share their ideas first? No, okay. Um, I definitely would like to see a representation from our community. I think we have a good working relationship currently with the, um, is it five communities that are in our area? My only mm -hmm. concern is that we're quite far from Chaplow, like the distance between Chaplow and Horn Payne is quite far, but our police officers do service that area. And I know just through this pandemic, it would have been nice to have the support of a collective group outside of um, council and the CCG kind of looking at the different avenues of policing for our community because we've had several topics come up during the emergency response. So that might have been a, a good time when they would have been able to gather collective ideas. And I think in the past it couldn't be a council representative, I believe, eh? Or that's it's on the sheet. I'm going by memory right now. I think it's saying that they are not wanting council. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so I, that's where I was thinking it would be a good, um, it would be another great body to have working at our within our community, especially when we're looking forward to climate change, uh, the the seriousness of uh, upcoming storms and the different things um, that can happen with uh, tremendous rainfall or snowfall, um, especially for our community. I definitely think there needs to be support on that board because um, it let's let's use the example of snowfall we're seeing higher and higher rates, um, higher amounts of snowfall falling in a shorter period of time, which can leave us kind of stranded where we are because of our location. So I, I would think that uh, the board would have um, some good roundabout ideas and opinions on that outside. It would take a bit of work off of um, our small municipal council kind of trying to think ahead of these things. So I would support a, us being on a board having a member on a board, an active member. I do so, have one question. Have, yeah. Go uh, ahead. On your, um, in your mayor's group, have you guys talked about the policing governance at all or? No, we haven't. That's actually a good idea, Belinda. We should put this on the, we do have one community though, that's outside of our policing area, which is Manitowage. So maybe we can ask, uh, we could talk about it at that group and maybe have a, a side discussion if Manitowage feels that would be all right. I think that with everyone being there from all the different communities, it would, uh, um, it's a good start. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally in agreement with you, Belinda. It's just, I know in other times when we've brought in issues to the mayor's group, we kind of like to have them every communities, it's um, an issue in every community. So, um, I don't see Manitowash having an issue at all with us discussing it there. So, and they might have insight actually if they're involved in a different strategy or organization or board. So it might be a good thing. Thank you for that. So what, uh, I guess this would be the day though that um, you would want, it would be for the July 15th meeting, Gail, for the resolution or for the letter? Yeah, yeah. Okay. like if I could get, some ideas into me in the next week or so that would give us time to prepare something. Okay, so council, you have until the 25th of uh, June. If you have any further ideas or um, issues that you see arising from this, and this is the time to get our voice out there because now we have it, then it'll be written in a letter that we've done something and we can come back to this if our service levels, especially with service levels. Now I have to say though, to uh, any of the public that uh, are 
watching our meeting at some time in the future, we have an amazing, tremendous working relationship with our, our OPP right now, just fabulous. So this creating a board, this is actually the ideal time to create the board and get involved because we've got such a good working relationship. This would be the time to create one under these good, good fertile soil. So, okay, so we'll leave it at that. You have until June 25th to get some more information into Gail. Thank you for submitting uh, your information, Drago. Uh, uh, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, through you, as Gail said, I submitted my information in timely manner, which she requested two weeks ago. She has all my information. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stefanik. Okay, so we're going to move on. That'll be uh, that will show back up on our July fifteenth meeting. So we have eleven point two. If I can get a mover and a seconder, and we can discuss the motion, please. I move it. Drago. John, did I see your hand? Thank you. Yes. Okay, moved by Drago Stefanik, second by John Peroff. Whereas Liquor Control Boards, LCBOs of Ontario, and Liquor Convenience Outlets, LCOs, require municipal approval to sell alcohol beverages on certain holidays as outlined by the attached. And whereas the owner of the local LCO has requested much such municipal approval. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain does provide consent for the local liquor convenience outlet to sell alcohol beverages on the following holidays. Canada Day, Wednesday, July 1st, 2020. Civic Holiday, Monday, August 3rd, 2020. Labor Day, Monday, September 7th, 2020. Thanksgiving, Monday, October 12th, 2020. Boxing Day, Saturday, December 26th, 2020. Any discussion on the motion? Go ahead, Councillor Stefanik. Thank you, Mayor. Through you, I support the uh, resolution 100% unequivocally. It'll give her a fair footing uh, to be open uh, as any other community around us. So I think uh, they'll give her a fair uh, a saleable, stability for her store. I'm, I'm pleased to see that. Thank you. Any other uh, discussions from Council? The only uh, observation I made, and this might be just because it's the first time brought to council floor, is um, are we going to eventually just do a, a draft, um, a solid resolution, or will it be included in some sort of business bylaw so that we, because I'm assuming we're going to have to pass this resolution again next year to allow it to happen for ever, for the next year. So I'm just, I'm just wondering for, um, to continue on to make it easier. I think when we get around to doing business bylaws, for sure, that's something that we can address in there. Okay, okay, right on. Okay, so is there any other questions from council or uh, discussion? I'm gonna put the motion to vote. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, that's fully supported and carried. Okay, moving on to correspondence information only. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter. Belinda. And John. Okay, John had his hand up, Belinda. <laughs> okay, moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the correspondence information only package attached to the agenda at the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. The motion's on the floor. Does anyone have any comments on 12.2.3 or 0.4? I open those up to the uh, Council. Okay, no comments? No. Okay, there being none, I put the motion to a vote. Those in favor? Aye. Okay, and that's carried. Okay, item 13, 14, 15, there are none. So we're moving on to 16.1, COVID-19 com uh, Community Control Group Update. I'll let Gail take that. Okay, so I forgot to bring my notes from the meeting this morning, but I'll try and remember um, what I said. Um, 
from the ministry update this week, um, they're seeing a, uh, a decline in the ratio between new cases and resolved cases. So new cumulative cases are 5% uh, versus 11% of cumulative resolutions, which is good. They also said that um, uh, used to be a 1 to 1.0, 1, 1 to 1 ratio of, of people spreading the disease to one another. And now they're saying that ratio has gone down to 0.7. So for every person that has COVID, they're spreading it to 0.7 of a person, which is a, an, in, uh, an improvement. Um, another thing they said was, um, of course, this has been brought up before about possibly uh, being concerned about having flu and COVID at the same time in the fall during our flu season. Um, but early indications from Australia who are in their flu season at the moment uh, are having lower numbers of flu reported and they're anticipating that it's because of the physical distancing that's in place. So it's, it's helping um, with the regular flu uh, and their numbers are way down. So hopefully that trend will continue here. Um, there weren't really any new issues today, I don't think. Um, the um, testing is continuing at the hospital. They had uh, 51 of their staff retested uh, per ministry guidelines and, and they all came back negative again. Um, Long-term care is opening up for visiting, uh, outdoor visiting at distances with masks and other protocols. Um, I can't remember when Allison said that was happening, but it's soon. Um, and then with regard to um, water, um, Heather brought up from the hospital, um, just asking to be notified if there's a, a chance of water issues uh, because apparently they have a lot of systems at the hospital that are water cooled. So um, that can cause a concern for them. So we're gonna do that. Um, I can't think of anything else. Uh, Cheryl, Drago, do you have anything else to add? Uh, nothing else to add. It was uh, just the one is uh, about the hospital update for the long-term care visits was that anyone that is going to visit at a long-term care facility is going to have to be tested before they can visit. And that test is only going to allow them really two visits because you're only allowed to visit once a week for 30 minutes. And then after two weeks, you have to be retested. So um, there was just some... We had some discussion on that, which um, the other thing I wanted to mention too was, uh, oh, I'm losing my thought train of thought here. The, it's too nice outside to be doing a meeting, I think. <laughs> um, oh. oh, it was uh, just, I think the whole group, the CCG group, everyone's um been attending it's been well attended and i think people are uh the professionals are getting tired really tired like it's you can see it's wearing and i think people need a break really so and because the other things especially at the hospital have not slowed down those things are still occurring so so anyway it's uh it's time to be gentle with people because i think they're everyone's very tired so Okay, so if there's any questions about that or, uh, oh, I do have one question just uh, for the community's sake, Gail. I know in your report you touched base on opening up the offices and that. Do you have a set date or any kind of timeline for that? I'm not trying to put pressure, I'm just for public oh, sake. Yeah, well, it's, it just really depends on getting our barriers up and uh, for staff to have childcare and for us to have enough staff to manage things properly so it's not frustrating for people. So I don't really have a date, but we I think everybody's feeling like, you know, it's time to come back. It's it's just a matter of getting everything into place. So hopefully that will happen in the next few weeks. Are you finding it difficult to secure people to put in the glass or get glass or to get Pexi glass and that? I know just with some renovating I'm doing, the home building centers are running out of supplies. Yeah, it's, it's the supply for plexiglass. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But if you're ever in the office, you, you should look at what Jay's done with, with Shanna's desk. It's beautiful. It's okay. Beautiful. Yeah, he's done a really good job. I'll have a look at that for sure. 
Thank you. Okay, well, if there's nothing further, we'll move uh, on to 16.2 Council Committee updates. And we'll do a roundtable council discussion. And I'll start with uh, Peter Kistmaker. And you're muted. I can hear him. <laughs> Madam Mayor, uh, nothing to report. This time around, there's been no hospital meetings and uh, nothing else has been uh, on the rec department. Everything's been pretty, nothing's going on. So that's all I got to say. <laughs> okay, short and sweet. Thank you. Belinda Kistemaker? It's been quiet. I haven't heard anything lately. So no, I have nothing to report. Okay. Uh, Councillor Drago Stefanik. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just the first uh, thing, how long are we going to be continuing with electronic meetings? Are we going to go into July? I'd like to get my bearings because I might have to go away for surgery. Uh, are we going to continue in July and August? Um, it seems you have to have 10 people. That's a maximum. If that's a social circle or not. So I'd just have some discussion regarding the next meeting, please. So you'd okay, like to bearings. have some discussion, discussion at electronically be, at the july correct. 15th meeting okay very clear okay um, so. the phu um i'm sad to say that uh <clears throat> don west the ceo is retiring after 32 years um from the hmm. phu and maria cook the executive secretary she's been there 34 years they're retiring in the june we have done a major restructuring where Dr. Catton now is going to be, she's an MOH, uh, medical officer help. She will be also now the CEO as well. We um, separate the jobs and we farmed out the jobs to different people, with different expertise within, with our, our own organization. We didn't go out to hire anyone else. So it's sad to see those two people because they did a tremendous amount of work. I know way back when I lived in Timmins 30 years ago, um, but it, it, they're going to be missed that sorely in my opinion. But we're moving forward. Um, we discussed earlier through uh, to Stacy the official plan. I know it's nice <clears throat> mail outs and everything else. There was discussion to have the open house possibly in the fall. Is that still going to happen? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, my understanding is uh, I can give this to Stacy as well to answer. But at the meeting on Saturday, they're talking about possibly in August if if it's allowable. Is that correct, Stacy? That's correct. So we decided not to go with a digital meeting uh, the early summer like we were planning in June. We put that off till August. So hopefully it'll be an in-person meeting. And that, and then we'll still have the fall open house, which is in September, which will have our first draft of the official plan at that meeting. Yeah. Thank you. And keeping on PHU, we only had 65 positive cases since May 10th. But unfortunately, we had number nine death happen on the weekend. It was a female oh, in her 90s. So that's nine. We're the highest area, death area in our northeast, northwestern Ontario, northern Ontario, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> the further comment was on, because we're looking at possibly selling, leasing or rental the nor former northern store. We never discussed the cost per square footage of rental. I, did the staff act on that or are they looking at possible, I mean, if you're going to put out the item to be rented or leased, uh, uh, this should be obviously per square footage rental. Yeah, I'll uh, open this up to Stacy as well. I know in discussions before Drago, we've always like, we have to be, we have to be competitive in the market. We can't undercut the market for one thing. And uh, Stacy, do you have any other further comments on this? So uh, more, the best process is to put it up for sale first. And if they, mm -hmm. they want to contact us by lease, we would set up a, a commercial rate uh, that would be higher than our business commercial rate, our, our local businesses. And what would that be per square foot through your mayor through Stacey, to Stacey, please? Well, well, I wouldn't have the number. It depends on what, what they're asking. Like, is it a, a lease? Is it a long-term lease, short-term lease, short-term rental? So it would have to depend on the parameters of the contract. Okay, because I did some research in our area close to us uh, last weekend. Uh, the square footage they're renting out in within 250 kilometers each way, east, west, north, anywhere between $14.67 per square foot up to $15.60 per square foot, something to work with. 
Yes, thank you. I I, uh, I did a bunch of research, so I have the numbers for our region and, and the normal commercial rate, but uh, I don't think we're going to get that for that space, but that will be an option for sure, but sale would be best. <laughs> thank you. And my final comment uh, to staff, I signed up today for the uh, land use planning. Uh, I hope there's a great exam. I hope they'll be tested and challenged it, because if it's not an exam, it's walk in the park, okay, of course. So if there's an exam, I'll share the exam with everybody else when I'm done my uh, course. Thanks. So. Okay. My understanding, if I my memory corrects, gets me correct, I think, Drago, when you take the course, it reviews the questions as you go, and it's reading, and it's very informative. All of the AMO courses are pretty good, so. Okay, so moving on to, thank you, Councillor Stefanik. Moving on to Councillor John Peroff. Uh, no, I don't really have any more update. Um, I got a question, though. Um, Drago just brought it up. With that course on the land use planning, is that recommended that all councillors take it, or that's to the mayor and the CAO? <laughs> Yeah, we've had discussions about this quite a bit at council and it's um, the previous council signed up for these courses. I'm not sure which ones uh, completed them. And then um, actually Belinda had looked into the, I can't remember which one it was she had uh, mentioned at one point. And um, so yes, it's recommended that all of council would take, would take the courses. And you don't, um, you have a duration of time to complete them and you can leave the course and come back again um, in and out in that uh, 30 days, I believe. I didn't reread the email you sent out, Gail, but, um, and they are informative, especially the one I would say is the financial one coming up, just because we're doing budget, that would be a great one to, uh, to, to do for council. It'll give you a lot of insight, answer some of your questions. Thank you. Okay. Did you want to add anything to that, Gail? I kind of just took it and ran. You're good? No, that was, that was perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, for my update, I um, haven't really been, I've been trying to keep a real low schedule just for this month, as this was supposed to be my month of vacation, which I moved to deal with the COVID crisis back in April when everything was really hopping um, in meetings and all of that so um, yeah so I've just been at home trying to prepare my backyard and gardening and that sort of thing trying to have some sort of a vacation so um, I want to say though that uh, I really am looking forward to when we have a communications policy because I think people have really liked the Facebook live updates and now are expecting that I'm going to be on uh, updating so I, I would like us to set out a plan of, you know, if it's every two weeks or what have you, I, I'm willing to to work with that. It's just right now it's I can't be on Facebook every every second day. That's overwhelming. So <laughs> but uh, but everything else is going good. I will do a update tomorrow morning uh, just about our different things. I want to remind people about the naming the bears contest because that uh, closes next week and um, also about the OP and the bylaw, just to make sure we keep putting that messaging out there. Please, Council, get the messaging out there that really to build a strong, vibrant, healthy community, we need the ideas of the people and the people have to have the buy-in into it or it, it just, it'll just it it'll be a document that doesn't go anywhere. So, and we definitely don't want that. So, and with that, that's all my update. If there's any questions, I'll take questions too. No? Okay. Well, we're uh, moving on. Okay, 18. We have uh, two bylaws, 18.1 and 18.2. If I can get a mover and a seconder for 18.1 to open the discussion, Peter. And a seconder, please, John. 
Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff, be it resolved that bylaw number 1798 being a bylaw to enter into the memorandum of understanding with the municipality of Wawa for the provision of services of an asset manager coordinator be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third and finally passed. Any questions on the motion? Go ahead, Councillor Stefanik. Three Mayor to Gail. Uh, looking at the financial consideration, um, is that for every community exactly what we're paying? You're muted, Gail. Sorry. Yes, it funds the position. From every community, same amount? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Any other further questions? Okay, I don't uh, see any or hear any, so I'll put the motion to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Okay, and that's carried. Okay, moving on to eight. 18.2, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please, for the motion. Okay, moved by Drago, if I can get a seconder, please. John. Okay, moved by Drago Stefanik, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the bylaw, that bylaw number 1799, being a bylaw to amend the Municipal Forest Fire Management Agreement with Her Majesty the Queen in right of Ontario, as represented by the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry, be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Any questions from Council on the motion? Okay, there being none, I'll put it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. And that's carried. Okay, so uh, our next portion of the meeting is for our closed sessions. Our closed session, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter? And a seconder, please. I'll second it. Belinda? Okay, moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the next portion of the meeting at 6.49 p.m. <laughs> be closed to the public in order to discuss a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege including communications necessary for that purpose a trade secret or scientific technical commercial financial or labor relations information supplied in confidence to the municipality or local board which if disclosed could reasonably expected to prejudice significantly the co competitive position or interfere with the contractual or other negotiations of a person groups of persons or organization pursuant of section 239 cf and i of the municipal act 2001 all in favor Mike. And that's carried. Okay, so we will be going to closed and um, council, you have the link, the other link, and we'll meet there uh, within, uh, do we want, does anybody need to have, uh, do you want five minutes? We'll get back on at 655. I don't think so. No, okay, 